There will be music. Romantic candlelight. Later, the Beast is trying to work up the courage to confess his love to Belle over the course of a romantic evening. I'm not sure I can do this. When the moment is right, you confess your love. Yes, I can... I... I... No, I can't. Oh, so much confliction. Meanwhile, over in Belle's dressing room, she's thinking... Your lady awaits. <laughs> we'll never know. Does she just go where she's told, wear what she's told, without questioning anything now? Is, is that what Belle has become? Her, her creepy, secretive, matchmaking servants just control her life? Here I am! I was told to show up and look nice. I have no idea what's going on, but dancing is fun, I guess, so whatever! How could she not tell that there is blatantly a scheme here to make them fall in love? How could she not see that? Rising in the east, tale as old as time, song as old as rhyme. You know, when you realize this is a film predicated on the suspense of others not knowing the protagonist's feelings, it, it's no wonder we feel emotionally detached from Belle. Her feelings are the entire stakes of the film, the single most important factor of any of this, yet at the same time, mean nothing. It's just a black and white thing. The only thing we care about is however much of Belle's feelings it takes to break the spell and continue the movie. Are you happy here with me? Yes. What is it? What is it? What is it? I don't know. What is it? What do you think? Did you just remember that you gave your freedom to me in exchange for your father's life? I know it's a bit of a bliss kill, but we'll get through it. If only I could see my father again. Just for a moment. I miss him so much. Right, that's all. That's the only thing. You, you honestly expect us to believe that not talking to her dad is the one hitch in this situation? There is a way. This mirror will show you anything. I'd like to see my father, please. Papa! No. He's sick. He may be dying, and he's all alone. Uh, also he's outside, in the cold, on the ground. You omitted those details, why? Like his reaction. Oh no, he's sick. Did I know that? Please, let him out. Can't you see he's sick? I feel like I knew that. Oh yes! That was me. He may be dying, and he's all alone. And so the beast realizes that truly loving someone means letting them- You, you must go to him. What did you say? Oh my god, why are you still here? I release you. You're no longer my prisoner. You mean... I'm free? Yes, let's stop and discuss it, shall we? What part of lying face down in a snowbank was difficult to understand? You should be gone, like yesterday. What? Are you worried about hurting his feelings? Your dad is dying! If the beast loves you, he'll understand! Also, Belle, I'm just gonna do that thing where I argue with you as if you've got a brain, because it's fun. If you recall, the reason the last time you were in that forest you two nearly died, the reason your escape failed, the reason your father ended up at this castle in the first place... Um... Wolves? Yes, uh, luckily for our hero, and Belle, the forest is much less wolfy today, so we get to hang around and have this conversation as if the concept of urgency has lost all meaning. Oh, thank you. Hold on, Papa. I'm on my way. Oh, thank you. Okay, so, Belle turns around and... Uh, Take it with you. Give me strength! So you'll always have a way to look back and remember me. Why is she going somewhere? Thank you for understanding how much he needs me. Hypothermia, people! Pick it up! Belle, what if he says no? Did you even consider that? Did you think about... What am I saying? And all of this because we needed the Beast to have a pivotal decision here. None of the character development that happens or could happen at this point is for Belle. Every single ounce of it has been reserved for the Beast. I'm sorry, movie, but you have more than one protagonist. She doesn't get a conflict, she doesn't get character development, she just gets to float there like a thoughtless lump. Someone get her a cloth. 
Belle reacting to outside forces is the only agency she has. Her father's the only excuse the plot gives her to do anything or go anywhere. And she doesn't even have that anymore. Thank you for understanding how much he needs me. She won't leave for her own sake, God knows. Neither, apparently, will she even leave for her father's sake anymore. She has to stop and wait patiently for permission to go save her dad's life. The last pivotal decision Belle got to make was not to leave the beast for dead in the woods, and the movie barely even gave her credit for that. That decision was also only overshadowed by all the focus on the beast's development. He let her dab his wound. <sighs> I'm sure it would rather we just attribute everything Belle does to either for my father or might be in love and ignore everything else. We are not meant to expect anything more of this character other than shut up, show up, don't ask questions, and put this dress on. Didn't she used to have something resembling self-respect and a disregard for what others had planned for her? Madame Gaston, his little wife. <laughs> no, sir, not me. Didn't you used to be reasonably stubborn? You can't stay in there forever! Yes, I can! Fine! Here I am hoping she'll grow a backbone and learn to stand up for herself, and she's actually regressed. She is totally fine with whatever the castle has planned for her, enough so that she won't even go to the trouble to ask what the plan is. And we certainly don't have to worry about her getting ideas and thinking. I let her go. Why? Because I love her. Oh, but if then we couldn't have the beast suffering for his selfless, noble decision. Do you hear me, Belle? Do you see what this is doing to me, woman? I can't believe you're actually asking us to pity this character for letting her go. That is the least he could have done for her. Mr. I get my gift ideas from a candle. <gasps> I thought I'd never see you again. But the beast, how did you escape? I didn't escape, Papa. He, he let me go. That horrible beast? Yes, Belle. Why don't you tell your father how the front door was unlocked the whole time? How, while he was risking his life, planning a daring rescue through wolf-infested woods on foot because you've got the horse, you were dancing and dining and keeping your promise like a good girl. I thought I'd never see you again. Go ahead, tell him. I'm sure he'll understand. But, Father, my morals! Hi! What is this? Belle, why'd you go away? Don't you like us anymore? They sent you, didn't they? The furniture! Don't you like us anymore? Look, Belle. Look at the baby teacup. Don't make the baby teacup sad. Oh, Chip. Of course I do. It's just the- Damn it, plot! Let the woman speak! We can't let anyone hear what she had on her mind! Quick, send the guilt trip, and the second she tries to defend herself, cut her off! There is no good reason to leave the castle. I don't care if her father was lying dead in the forest, or the entire village thinks he's insane now, or he was worried sick. Perhaps literally. None of that matters. None of that matters. I've come to collect your father. Now, in the meantime, Gaston has paid off the asylum keeper to lock up Maurice unless Belle agrees to marry him. My father's not crazy! Show me the beast! <laughs> Is it dangerous? Oh, no, no, he'd never hurt anyone. <laughs> never? Anyone? I think you mean anymore, and well, just the innocent. Because I don't know if maybe you forgot how the beast blackmailed you into bargaining your life away. I might be able to clear up this little misunderstanding if you marry me. Kind of like that. And then, you know, how he locked away your father. Get your hands off me! Yes, just like that. And also you... There she goes. So, romantically speaking, Belle gets to choose between two blackmailing, kidnapping jerks. Lucky girl. If you marry me. Never. Have it your way. He's my friend. If I didn't know better, I'd think you had feelings for this monster. He's no monster, Gaston. You are. Oh, what joy. Belle has learned to respect herself as being more than just a daddy bargaining chip. That's kind of like progress. 
if you squint at it. I mean, she finally tells off Gaston, and this is supposed to be her big empowering moment. I'm the creature! Let us out! And then she just gets locked away again! Did everyone see that? Bell was assertive like two seconds. I can just put her away now. Okay, good. Good. So, okay. That counts, right? Everyone saw that. Okay, good. Stay! So anyways, the town grabs their torch and pitchforks and sets off to kill the beast. Meanwhile... I have to warn the beast! What you doing with that, uh, that, that stick there, Bell? And that kind of looks like Marisa's workshop. Don't worry, father. We'll just use one of your brilliant inventions to get us out of here. I have to warn the beast. This is all my fault. Sweet Jesus, what am I looking at? Oh, Papa, what are we going to do? Bell, it's not a force field. It's glass! Of curses, father. It appears to be stick-proof glass. No, no. We'll think of something. Oh, oh the, the teacup, right, naturally. I can see exactly how that story meeting must have gone. Okay, wait, guys, we just locked Belle and Maurice in the basement. How the hell do they get out? Oh, that's right, she's helpless. Damn. Yeah, we really should have thought this through. Um. Oh! What about the teacup? <laughs> Belle, look out! Two fully grown adults. One of them, an inventor, can't find a way to break a window. But a five ounce teacup can figure out a wood chopping machine, fire it up, race it down the hill, and hack itself into their basement. To put this in perspective, all of the castle's enchanted furniture managed to band together and successfully quell a violent swarm of armed villagers. I'm talking beer steins, sets of drawers, coat racks, kitchen utensils, exceptionally resourceful armoires, and yes, teacups! All somehow have enough agency to find a way to fight back. Belle couldn't solve a window! But the furniture can fight off a mob! You see, normally, if we're dealing with a character and not a plot device, this would be Belle's belly of the whale moment, where she hits rock bottom and grapples with an existential ultimatum inside herself and emerges with a new life-changing resolved prime to confront her final test. Unless your movie gave up on your development eons ago, in which case your agency will need to be outsourced to something insultingly stupid and irrelevant, like the nearest morsel of sentient crockery. Anyways, the important thing is Belle is finally back on her horse. Which is good, because the plot actually seems to take her seriously when she's on a horse. And she finally arrives just in time to... Ah! Whimper from the gate. That's kind of cool. At least Belle's return did something. Belle's return gives him a reason to fight back and a reason to live. And Belle's influence comes through when the beast shows Gaston mercy and spares his life. Beast! Belle. Which works out great. Wait, so Belle did- did she even- like, he gets shanked either way? Thank goodness Belle arrived when she did to stop the beast from getting- shanked like a minute earlier. Wait, so it was Belle's influence that led him to show mercy, but then Belle is the distraction that allows him to be stabbed as a direct result of said mercy. You guys want us to be happy Belle is here, right? Well, that's nice. What, Belle's character doesn't even have any thematic integrity worth preserving? I mean, Belle's influence is nice. It still gets you stabbed, but it's nice. I mean, Belle was on track to dramatically affect the outcome of this battle until this, at which point her impact on the scene is effectively nullified. She saved his life and then got him killed. It's amazing, really. You guys are like character canceling ninjas. But whatever, have the beast get stabbed as a direct result of Belle's return. No one will care. Look how innocent she is. Look at that face. Who could be mad at that face? You're so cute. After all, we don't want Belle to move the story or affect the outcome of a scene or be significant in any way. Unless... I love you. 
the three magic words that Bell was brought into this world to utter. Which for some reason weren't someone get help. You'll be alright. <laughs> no, Bell. He's not dying of a crumpled cape. The whole movie revolves around this moment. She must say she loves the beast and it must be genuine. But in order for it to be genuine, they had to keep her pure, dumb, and unquestioning. She can't know about the curse, she can't know about the terms of the curse, what she has to do with the curse, why everything is enchanted. I don't even think she knows that he's a prince. Probably so no one thinks Belle is being nice to him out of anything other than altruistic compassion and love. Which is great in theory, but if you have to dumb her down that much, if the believability of their relationship hinges on Belle showing even mild suspicion or asking simple questions, that's a pretty crummy love story. She never even asks about the rose, even after she's seen it. The plot required that she fall in love against all odds. Apparently, reducing her to an unthinking blob of obedient helplessness was the only way to do that. Turns out anyone can fall in love with anyone, if you don't have to worry about them. Getting ideas and thinking. See, Belle's actions don't have to make sense, when the movie can just rely on us projecting our own sympathies for the beast onto Belle. That works right, that's handy. Screw independent thought and believability, let's just all do that. Also, you, you, what is wrong with you? How on earth is he allowed to commit multiple, far worse crimes? in the process of atoning for leaving an old woman in the rain. And earn her love in return. You don't earn love by kidnapping! She needs to sort out her priorities. So, when you say earn, could I force her to stay in my castle till she likes me? I see no problem with that. What about blackmail? That's fine. Coercion? Sure. The kidnapping? Why not? What if I wanted to kill someone? As long as it's not because they're ugly. So the question they lead with... For who could ever learn to love a beast? It's a bit misleading. Does she learn to love the beast? No. But we can't have Belle learn things. That would imply she's not already perfect. The beast was the one who had to learn to love. Belle worked right out of the box. She's teaching him. Who could ever learn to love a beast? We still don't know! That person never showed up! Belle killed her and took her place. She was designed for the sole purpose of carrying out this fairy tale to the letter, not to bring anything new or unexpected to it. Did her being an inventor's daughter ever move the story? No. Did she ever do anything useful out of her love of reading books? No. Did her being odd or unusual or dazed and distracted ever amount to anything relevant? No. All of her characterization is purely cosmetic. All she needed to be was dreamy and whimsical enough not to ask questions, doting and nurturing enough to sacrifice herself for practically anything, passive enough to stay put and or agree to be a prisoner for a second time, but strong-headed enough so we don't think she's too much of an abuse victim, and just the right taste in books to make us think she might actually be into this sort of thing. Abuse is like an adventure, right? Belle is defined by what happens to her, by what others want from her, not who she is as a person. Despite that we're supposed to be overly impressed that she won an argument that one time, she's practically a walking pamphlet on the womanly art of diffusing aggressive men. So, is she a good role model? Other than walking and reading like a boss, I can't imagine anything healthy anyone can take from Belle. I guess if nothing else, we can all aspire to look as whimsical and serene reading in public as she does. Even then, I don't know if that's very realistic. It's hard to be whimsical and serene when you're walking into a door frame. Not that I did that. I really wonder what sort of standards she sets for promise keeping and basic self-respect. I mean, why is anyone okay with what Belle subjects herself to? According to this film, there is no limit to the indignities and abuses she can endure. No ceiling to her own ethical treatment that could possibly justify breaking a promise. By which I mean breaking a promise and keeping it that way. Not even apparently the original trade-off of her father's life. And I don't know, does she have Stockholm Syndrome? That's the theory, isn't it? Stockholm Syndrome is a complex psychological condition. Meaning, you need a working brain first. I'm sorry, Stockholm Syndrome didn't make her resort to instinctual self-abnegation, or prevent her from asking simple questions about her own fate and circumstances, or prevent her from, you know... 
She was a docile, brainless doormat long before she became attached to her captor. Does she have Stockholm Syndrome symptoms? Yes. She also has symptoms of being a vapid plot device who exists as a tool to help everyone else most conveniently accomplish their goals. I don't know if that's better. But the fact that the internet is taken to finding an alternate explanation for Belle's actions tells me I am not the first person to wonder what is going on in her head. But mostly, there is nothing that pisses me off more than phony, wool-over-the-eyes characterization. Oh, but, oh, but she's peculiar and odd. No, she isn't. You just made her look like the odd one out because she's the only one in town doing nothing. What a rebel. She is the quintessential standard of femininity from virtually any age. You just gave her a book. Good job. I think the first ten minutes of this film could be summed up as, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it must be a chair. If you want odd and peculiar adventurer's daughter who thinks and has ideas, then write that! Don't write the most passive, blandly feminine doormat the world has ever seen and try to trick us into thinking she's interesting. But, as I said at the start, princesses have potentially come a long way since Belle. Potentially. Hopefully. <laughs> Please. So let's press on and we can pray. That some of the newer princesses actually start getting ideas and thinking. I'm sorry, that's the last one. I swear I'm done now. I'll be around no matter how you treat me now.